good yes yeah, another beautiful day looking at c programming and yesterday we have started the journey and like i said i'm going to recap i'm going to recap because we had a delay that yesterday so we just make it so that the class can hold yesterday so i'm going to recap what we have done yesterday and we start from there and we continue to what we have for today so all these basic they are very very important and as much as possible i want at least 90 percent 90 percent of this group should able to what to to produce or or uh, 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 reprocate what i have thought you should be able to display it at the end of this class that will be my joy that will be my joy so please and please pay attention if you don't understand call my attention aspect you do not understand you you still want me to explain don't just talk just drop the words the the, the message or you raise up your hands and if now i will call my attention to that so thank you i share my screen now So today's topic is getting started with C programming. Getting started with C programming. That is the topic. Now, oh, sorry, let me open the Git bash because that's where most of our work will always be done, and we did that yesterday. So our topic for today is getting started. Let me create it in the readme file.
if you have your materials with you you can start writing if you have your material with you please write If you have your material with you, please write. If you have your material, write. Always come to this class with your writing materials. People that are just joining, please mute your mic. Never you or mute your mic. If you have questions, drop the question in the income message. And if you want to talk, raise up your hands. Don't just bust into this meeting without being called. So we stop here for today. Now, so these are the topic we want to quickly look at this morning. We want to look at hello world in C, then C variables, print F variable, print text and variable, then changing value of variable. Now, before you will write your program in C language, number one, you have to have your header file. Number two, you have to have your entry point. And number three, you have your code block. And number four, you have your return statement. Those are the four steps that you need to know first. And how do we declare our header file? Now, let me show it to you. You declare your header file by starting with your hash, include std, stdio.h. Your stdio.h means what? Standard input output header file. So this is what we call our header file, our header file. The next thing we need to do is to declare our entry point. And our entry point is usually main, then void. That is int, main, void. That's how to declare your entry point. After your entry point, the next thing is your code block. Is your code block. So this is our code block. This is the third thing to do. After your code block, the fourth thing you will do is to declare your return statement here. Yeah? Your return statement, which is usually this way. So this is the syntax of writing C programming. That is the syntax of writing C programming. So let's master that. Make sure you understand you understood this. Okay, before you can write your NEC programming language, you need to what to declare your header file, your entry point, your code block, and your return statement. So having done that, having done that, the next thing we want to do. According to our topic, let me click on that and check the topic. So is what we want to print hello, 
Hello World. We want to what do will be our first program that we want to write. And to print hello world, to print hello world, we have what we call a function that we can use to print that hello world. Number one function we can use is print f function. And number two function we can use is put s function. And number three we can use is put char, put char. So, and we are going to quickly look at those theory functions that we want to use. So firstly, I want to use printf. I want to print hello. Let's put comma, hello world. And let's put okay. So with this now, we can always print this out. By we what compiling. Now we have our we have this file. This is the file. No, sorry, this is the file. We have the file. Then how do we want make this file executable? The language we are having here, this hello world, nobody can understand this except the programmer. The end user does not understand what is hash include stdio, what is int main void, and what is the, the code block, and what is return statement, and what is print f. The only thing they could relate with is that word, hello world, but they don't know what is going to generate or what is going to produce. So therefore, how do we make it what? Usable. Usable for the what? For the user. At the command line. Now, this place, this is not what we call what? Command line. This one is what? Back. Is what this? Back the scene. The back of the scene. So now we want to go to the world to the command line. At this command line now, how do we produce what we have in this file? To do that, you need a compiler when it comes to C language. So your compiler, you use GCC. I stand for GNU compiler. I forgot the third C. That stands for that. Then you need to state the file name, this file name. I copied it. Let me paste it. This is the file name. So this file name, you need to output it. For you to output it, that is to direct it into a particular file that will be similar to this. So that when next, you want to check for this file and you want to check for the executable file, you can always relate it with this source file. This one is called source file. Why the file we are going to generate now is going to be called what the executable file. So I am outputting whatever that is coming here. I'm directing it through this word minus O or dash O. I'm outputting it to this file. So this file now will now be called the executable file. Why this one is called the source file. Now I press enter. Now I have compiled my code with that error. So let's see. This is the file now. It has become what? Executable. When you see it in a green color, depending on the setting of the of the of the system you are using so this is our source file why this one is our what executable file now let us call this executable file this executable file is inside where inside this directory so that is why we are going to type a dot 
This dot means what? Current directory, which is the, this is the current directory. And we put slash. We know the work of slash is to separate a directory. So they tell us that what? Whatever we want to call is inside this current directory. And we are calling this one now. We want to execute it. So that is it. Now press enter. Now we have our hello world with the use of what? Print F. With the use of print F, we have it. All right, thank you for that. Gino compiler collection. Collection. Gino compiler collection. That's the full meaning of this GCC. Now, So we have printed using what print F. Now we move to how to use put put S. It's like I have it here before, so I'm going to delete it. I have put S before which is I'm going to delete it so that I can produce another one. By using RM minus R to remove the puts S that I'm having, both the executable file and the source file. I'm, remo I'm removing the two. I I've done that. I don't have it yell again. I don't have it yell again. Oh, I'm still having this. So let me delete this. So I'm not having it there again. So let me open another one. Put S. So by first declaring my header file, which is what hash include stdio.h, I declare my entry point, which is int main, then c, I mean entry point, then void. Then I declare my code block. Is that my code block? And to have what return statements. I'm to have return statements. So before I write my put S. So this is put S. Performing the same song, the same function, performing the same function, the same thing with our print F, but they have their differences. They have their differences, which I'm going to point at. I will point at, at the differences for us after we print this put S program. So by me still using what the Gino compiler collection. Then I want to output it by what typing minus is zero into puts s. Now it compiled with that word an error. So I want to list it. This is the put s, which is the source file. This is put as executable file. Now I want to call this executable file, which it is in this current directory. Because it's in current directory, I will press what dot slash. And press enter. Now I have it. Look at this. I consider this place. Can you see this emptiness? Look at this. 
Now, word was written as no one, no line, no new, no space, no new line. But here, there is new line, there is space. So to tell us, the difference between F and put S is that all scaling lines are different. Put S will always have new line. Put S will always have the new line. F will never add new line or you specify it. Mr. Mali. Difference between put S and print F is that, okay, let me try to display it again. Now, this is our put S. This one is called the source file, while this one is called the executable file. Now, I want to call this executable file, which is in the current directory here, because it is a current directory, I will put my dot slash, this slash, we know we use it to separate directories. Now, okay, this file here now, this put S, is what is inside this current directory. That's what it means. So now when I type it, this is hello world. And let's consider this place. We can see a new line here. Whereas in our code, in our code, we have not put any new line. We have not put any new line, but by default, put S, we add the new line for horse. But let's see, print F. Does print F add the new line by default? Does it add the new line? So let's see. Let's check that. We know this is our what print f this is our print f file now this is the executable file now this is the hello world and we see there's no word no new line but yeah there is new line and let's enter into that hello world So this is it. For it to produce a new line, we need to specify by what? By using your backward slash n. Backward slash n character. This still is called is known as character. But it's indicated as what? As a new line. New line. So let us see now and try to compile it. I want to have put it into a new file. So let me do hello. So now I want to call it out. Sorry, that's not a complete file. All right, it's still printed it out. That's fine. So until so this file, hello, this executable file. So I added a new line to this one. So make it what to generate this new line here. Sorry, where is it? To generate the new line here. But when it comes to this one, it has no new line. When I was compile that code. So let me call it out now.
Ah, can you see? This one does not have a new line. Now, we want to move to the third one, to the third function, which is put char. What does put char do? Why is put char different from put s and print f? Put char, we only print one character at a time. We only print one character at a time. Now, this your H is one character. Your E is another character. Your L is another character. This L is another character. This O is another character. This comma is another character. Your space is also a character. Your W is a character. Your O is a character. Your L is a character. Your L is a character. Your D is a character. Your uh, exclamation mark. They are all character. If you now put put char here, if you if you said you are using put char here, put char will not print all this thing for you. Let us try it. Let's give it a try. Let me try to remove the new line. Or oh, don't let me mess this up. Let me create a new file for it. I have it here already. So let me delete it. Let me remove it. All right, it's gone. So let's see if Putcha will be able to print all this character for us. Hello, good morning, morning. Yes, I'm sorry to be on the me. Now we have our Putcha. So let us compile it. And we see throwing error for us. Why? Let's see the error. Warning passing argument one of putcha makes integer from pointer without a cast. Before we can print something like this, there is a way we can still use putcha to print all this character. But we have to introduce either array. Or we use pointer to do that. So which will be advanced for us for now. So I'm not doing that for now. Later we are going to see how we can use um, array and pointer to, to print. I mean, using array and pointer with putcher to print characters. To print characters. So we are going to see that. So that is not for today. In the next class, whenever we get there, we are going to do that. So what does put channel do? 
how do we do it? It prints what one character at a time. It prints one 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 character at a time. So let's go back to it again. Let me see. Actually, if you want to use if I do not even recognize, so let's forget about that. Now we said what well, it prints one character at a time. I'm going to reduce the number of characters so that to save this time. All right, let me quickly print all. Let me print all. This cover much. So, you know, after our hello world, there is space. So, you leave the space. You don't put anything there. No, is it space now? No, it's comma. So, it's comma. You indicate your comma. Your, your comma too is a character, like I have explained. Your space. It's also a character. Your space is a character. You leave the space empty. We don't put anything. Then before another word or another character, I mean, which is word, W. Another one. Another character. Another character. Why, lastly, this is also a character. Now, you can also add new line. Let's put new line. To print your new line, use your backwards slash n. That is your new line. Now, let us compile. You want to compile? Wow. We have this already. Okay, didn't I delete this? So let me delete this. All right, so we want to compile this to make it executable. And to do that, we use our GCC. Put Put star, then we output it. By typing dash O, then we output it to put star. And it's compiled with that error. So let's execute it by calling it. Now we have the hello world. The new line we have added is also what reflected. So this is how to use put star. To print characters, it will only print one character at a time. This is one character. This is another character. This is another character. This is another character. So, and so on and so forth. 
So that is about that. We have come to the conclusion of what hello world. By now, you should know the difference between. So, Mr. Mari, please pause the video. The summary of this class now. Okay, Mr. Wally, you can continue with your recording. If you are ready, let me know. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, the summary of what we have done since morning is this. Number one, declaration of EDA file, which is hash include the open bracket, that is your less than sign, stdio.h, then you close it, the bracket, which is your was your greater than sign, you move to the next line, you declare your entry point, which is int main void. Int main void, your void in your what in your bracket. That is that bracket is called a parenthesis. Then after that, you open your curly braces, which is known as your code block. Inside your code block is where you want to write your code, and you give it a return statement. Now, inside our code block, we use print F to print hello world. We use put S to print hello world. We use put char to print hello world. What are their differences between print F, put S, and put char? Please drop your answer in the echo message, everybody. Thank you. I'm waiting. The difference between put S print F and put char. Body, thank you, thank you. Now, the differences between put S, print F, and put char is that put S, by default, we add a new line. Why print F? We not add a new line by default. Why put char can only print one character at a time? At a time. Now we've come to the end of that. Let's move to the next topic. To the next subtopic. So we've covered this. We want to move to variable. Want to move to C variables. Now, if you have question or you have something to say, drop it in the income message by variable. What is a variable? Now, variable is a container that store data, it store values. Let me put it, let me come down to our level. Variable is like a pause, a pause where you put your money. You save your money inside your pause or inside your bag. That is variable. So variable is a container that holds data. And variable can store different types of data. As we have different types of currency in Nigeria, we have uh, different units of currency. Like I mean to say, in Nigeria we have uh, we have five naira, we have ten naira, we have twenty naira, we have fifty naira notes, we have hundred naira notes, we have two hundred naira notes, we have five hundred naira notes, we have one thousand naira notes. If we have all these notes with you, you always put them inside your purse or inside your bag, or inside your pocket. Your pocket, your purse, and your bag start, start as a variable. Why those money? They are called your data. 
they are called your values. So anytime you want to make reference to your money, you will go to your purse or you go to your bag. So same thing is applicable when it comes to variables. Now, what type of variables? That is, what type of currency do you want to bring out from your purse? Is it the 5 Naira note? Is it the 10 Naira note? Is it the 20 Naira note? Is it the 15 Naira note? Is it the 100 Naira note, 500 Naira note, or 1,000 Naira note you want to bring out? Depending on you. And whatever money, currency you want to put inside your purse is also what? Left over to you. It's left over to you. You yeah, want to determine that. And that will lead us to what we call what data type. That will be another thing. We are not talking about data type now. So what we need to know now, how do we declare a variable? How do we declare a variable? I repeat, how do we declare a variable? Usually known as what? Variable declaration. You call it variable declaration. How do we do that? Now, let me show it to you. We still include your words, your hash include, which is the what? Your passport. To write a C program, your key. Without it, you cannot write anything called C programming. How do you declare variable? For you to declare a variable, it must have what we call what data type. This will lead me to a data type anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to cover the two. We have what we call what data type and your variable name. Then you terminate it. This is how to declare a variable a variable when it comes to c programming language that's how to declare a variable please get your writing materials and write all these things down jot it down this is how to declare a variable it will have what we call data type and the variable name then you will terminate it with this semicolon it's just like when you're writing a sentence your sentence must end with what with with a uh, full stop or with dots. So that is how to declare it. Now, your variable, uh, remember we said what variable name, name, it is a name. So you can choose any name you like. You can choose any name you like as your variable. If you like, you can say your variable name is Ladderman. And the variable name you want to use is what? Is Ladderman. And you terminate it. You can say the variable name you want to use is Ezekiel. And you terminate it. You can decide that the variable name you want to use is what is A, and you terminate it. That is what how to declare a variable. But we are not yet true. We are not yet done because we are yet to state our data type. Now, quickly, let me introduce what we call data type. Data type has to do with what? type of data that you want to what you want to save like i said different type of currency i mean units i mean different type of notes that you want to put inside your port inside your pulse now Data type, example of data type, we have number one, we have int, usually known as what, integer.
integer. Number two, we have a usually known as character. Number three, we have floats, usually known as floats. Number four, we have double. usually known as double. Number five, we have long int, long int, usually known as long int. We have six, long long ends and so on and so forth so let me stop here this one are the common one the common one so as we progress we can always talk on the the, the remaining data type but for now let us stop here and i want you to pay attention to this to this uh, int, char, float, and double. So this is what we call our data type. Now, if you now want to store your value, okay, let me quickly explain. What do we mean by what? This integer. What do we mean by what? Integer. Integer simply means a whole number. A whole number. That is a number with no decimal point a number with no remainder it is a whole number not a fractional number and not a decimal number but we are talking of a whole number one is a whole number two is a whole number is zero is a whole number four is a whole number five is a whole number six ten is a whole number one thousand is a whole number so such number I've mentioned are known to be what? An integer. They are known to be an integer. So if you now want to store this data type, that okay, the data type you want to store is an integer. Therefore, you declare the words, the data type. You declare that data type. That okay, this data type I want to store is an integer. Therefore, let's quickly look at that, what we are going to do. So how do we do that? Now, coming to this place, this is data type, what to declare a variable name. So let me come down. This data type that I want to store is integer. It's integer. So therefore, I will type my int. This int stands for what? Represent this data type, int. Then the variable name. Like I said, you can call it any name, any name. So let me use quote 12. Quote 12 as my variable name. So this is what we call what? Variable declaration, variable declaration, variable declaration. Now, everybody, quickly and declare a variable for me by sending it into this income message. Declare a variable with a char or with, with, with a character. Okay, declare a character variable for me. Declare a character variable for me. Please quickly drop it in the call message before counting to 10. One, I could see the answers. Now, let me point out our errors. Laurie, you copied mine. That one is not accepted. Give me your own. Give me your own right now. Now. I can see some confusion. So let me clear it out. Let me clear those doubts. 
Laurel, I'm still waiting for your answer. All right. Okay. Laurel, I'm still waiting for your own answer. I'm here to see it. Now, let me point out our mistakes. Let me point out our mistakes. Some people wrote it this way. So this is wrong. This is wrong. It is available. The variable does not carry quotation. The variable does not carry quotation. It does not carry quotation. You don't put quotation in your variable name. For some of you, you are putting quotation. Put quotation. Broke. So if you are declaring your variable, We have to what variable name and assign value to value now the creation is simply able to declare our our state now and especially in that chart because some of you are putting quotations some of you did not put what you did not put your terminator you only type charles c and you do not put the terminator, your full stop, your end point, which is your semicolon. You do not put it, so it is wrong. Then you don't start a variable with number. You don't start variable name with a number. You don't start variable name with a number. And you don't start, I'm coming, don't let me confuse this. Actually, in the next class, so I'm going to list the perfect way of declaring, I mean, of writing our variable names, of writing our variable names. That will be in the next class. So um, now, let me answer the question that Ladaman asked. Will it be applicable here? No, it's not here. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, what we are having here is also an integer. It's also an integer, but have its own different function. It has its own different operation. What you can use your, sorry, I'm relating it to Nigeria. Okay, let me just, don't let me put the, the symbol. Now, what you can use your 50, ah, I don't know how to put it to, okay, let me use dollar. What you can use your $50 to purchase is quite different from what you can use your $100 to purchase. So to tell you that what, they are, actually they are both currencies, but they have their different operation, they have their different units. So the work of that int that we are seeing here, the work of the int we are seeing here is different from this one we are declaring in our variable name. It's different. This one has to do with what? With this return statement. I don't have it here, so let me put it. It's working along with this. Uh, okay, if the code we are running runs successfully, runs successfully, it should return zero for us. When it returns zero, it's a success. And when it returns any number, that is not zero number, then 
is not a success. That is what that means. That it's an error. At times, our code will still compile without giving us what any error, but we will not have the right result we are looking for. So we know that yes, there is still an error, and it will it will it will compile. It will return the zero, but yet we are not having the right result. That it does not return that it does not return any number apart from the zero does not mean that code is correct in, in as much as what you are yet to have the right result but what he does are what okay um every syntax every conditions they are correct so it's it will run successfully but your condition you know if you want to solve a problem there is always a particular way to achieve that result. So which was that code is unable to do. But following every process, you've passed all the process. But there are still some things which still make it not to produce the right results. At times you will compile your code. It will not give you an error. And yet you will not have the right result. So you'll be wondering what could be the cause. So just go back and rethink again. Code is all about what? Logical thinking, logical reasoning. So that it that you ask, ladder man, the it is different from that one at the entry point, which I have cleared that. But this it is refers to your what? Your variable. It's not about the return type now. It's not about return type. So thank you for that message all right so uh let's see the next topic now we've know how to declare a variable let us see how to assign value to our variable how to assign value to our variable so i'm going to play all this away now Now, how do we assign variable? I mean, value to our variable. This one is called variable declaration. So this is called variable declaration. Now let us go to what what we call initialization. Initialization of variable. There is difference between variable declaration and initialization of variable. If you are talking of variable declaration, that means you are not assigning value to it. Now when it comes to what initialization of variable, that means you want to pass value to it. So in this are available. Equals to n. Now, since we are passing value to these words, to this code 12, this is called in the Shall I session of variable? So this is what initialization of variable. 
That is, this sign we are looking at is called what? Assignment operator. We call it assignment operator. This sign we are looking at, we call it assignment operator. Why this one is our value, no as your, your data. So the thing that I passed to that port 12 is called data. It's called your data. And what type of data is 10? It is an integer. That is why what we declare an integer here. Because this thing that I want to pass inside this port 12 is a what? Is a whole number. Therefore, I will declare my integer. So this code 12 now is not storing. It, it, it is holding this 10. It is holding this 10. So that means what? Anywhere I see code 12, it represents 10. Anywhere I see 10, it represents code 12. Because I have assigned 10 by using this word, the assignment operator, to code 12. So it means that what our variable is equal to 10, whose data type is an int. Is an int. Whose data type is an int. Now, if you want to pass value for floats, for floats. Now, what is floats? Floats is a decimal number is a decimal number. That is, it could be 2.4, it could be 5.8, it could be 9.01, it could be 25.679. Those are what we call floats, floats, floats. They are called decimal number. And you declare it this way. Because I want to pass, let me see you score 12. So this is floats. Floats. So that will be answered in the next declaration. So this is floats. Now, if you are declaring a character now, when it comes to character, okay, what you want to declare is character. You can always do it this way. A or if you're having more than one character, if you're having more than one character, and to declare that, we introduce this. So either we declare it as an array or as a pointer, or as a pointer. This is too advanced for you now. So when it comes to this, so that will be what? H, comma, space, O, comma, L, comma. So this one is what? More than one character. In that case, we should still put some additional information here, which is what either as an array by declaring the number of array. Let's say the number of array we want is 10. That is, every character here we want to print will be what will be 10. Or we use what uh, a pointer, a pointer before we can write things when we are using the pointer. Then this becomes, we write it this way as a string.
So this is what we'll be having. So I don't know. Okay, Mr. Mowale. Now we have come to the end of this class. Thank you. See you tomorrow. So Mr. Mowale, you can pause the video. <laughs>